Hi, my name is Ivers Meyers. I'm a freelance iOS developer and most of the time I'm using my Max for iOS application development. And recently I upgraded my 13-inch 2015 MacBook Pro to 16-inch MacBook Pro and this video will be my impressions after one and a half weeks of usage of this machine and also I will answer some of the questions why I received from you in Instagram DMs. Yeah, and before I forget, uh, there are like and subscribe buttons, you can push them in any time. Right now you can do that as well. <laughs> as soon as 16-inch MacBook Pro was available in Latvia, I ordered one and I got base model, cheapest one from them, and why I decided to get this model and what was my assumptions and how it works for me. Let's talk about that in a minute. But let's start with keyboard. Keyboard was my reason why I didn't upgrade it yet and I just can't afford to get my keyboard broken somewhere in the middle of the trip. I don't know, in Thailand for example. The new keyboard feels better for typing. This is my first MacBook Pro with touch bar. I do not mind to have it. There is escape key in this new MacBook Pro and that works very well and I really like to have touch ID. Touch ID is just perfect for computer unlocking. I really like to use it for all the password entries and so on. I'm using one password on my Mac and also iCloud passwords works with it. Next one in my list and also an asked questions is screen. Is it not too big? Is it not too bright? And so on. Screen is great. I really, really like this uh, big and bright screen. I really like to work on uh, in Xcode on this screen. I can comfortably use it. On 13-inch MacBook Pro I had to uh, hide some Xcode elements to work comfortably on it, but uh, on 16 inch it works perfectly with all the sidebars uh, available, so that's definitely big benefit and big plus. But uh, big screen, it is a big uh, size of MacBook on his own as well, and that may be con for someone. So I'm waiting for foldable screens, but <laughs> until it is not available, so we have to have a bigger uh, laptop for, to have a bigger screen. And uh, 16 inch MacBook is significantly bigger and I didn't travel with it yet. We'll see what I will say after first trips with this MacBook. And of course I can't fit it in my 10 liters uh, sling bag. Uh, which I use for my 13-inch MacBook Pro, but I can put it comfortably in my backpack and when my MacBook is in backpack, basically it's not so big difference, is it 13-inch or 16-inch MacBook Pro. Weight difference is quite significant, um, this is 700 grams or 1.5 pounds uh, difference between both machines. For me personally, I see that as soon as I start using backpack, I like to pack something else, more extra things that is maybe not so needed. Camera body, additional lenses, batteries, microphone and so on, maybe tripod, that everything adds some weight and I will need to be more careful with packaging. Okay, next one in our list is performance and processor. So, as I said, I choose an i7 processor over i9 processor. I did some research and I saw that I will have very small difference in uh, processing speeds for my use case. In Xcode it is not so big difference between i9 and i7 processors. But I recorded some tests for side-and-side -side compiling uh, tests between my both of my MacBooks for one of my Swift UI test projects. You can see timer and che check the difference between both of my MacBooks. So this is uh, just Swift UI test project, but production projects I will not show those. But the biggest and most complex one compiles on 16-inch MacBook Pro in less than one and a half minute. 88 seconds <laughs> if uh, go to deeper in details, but uh, that is just first initial compiling. Incremental compiling is quite fast, it's 
about uh, 0 0.55 seconds in, in fastest case. So that's fast enough on i7 processor. Uh, additionally, I'm not planning to keep uh, this MacBook Pro so for so long time. Hopefully Apple will not screw up something with this uh, model and I will be able to upgrade in a few years. And uh, eventually I believe that we will see MacBook Pro on ARM processors and I am planning to upgrade this MacBook Pro in 2-3 years as soon as we'll, I will see that it is necessary. Ok, we are on SSD part. I have 256GB of SSD in my old MacBook Pro and that's about enough for development but Apple was very nice and uh, upgraded base models with 512GB of SSD RAM and I decided to stick with this size. It is totally enough for me for development, for video editing it is not enough but 1TB uh, uh, internal SSD will not save me and therefore I bought uh, this one that is uh, SanDisk uh, external SSD it's quite fast it's basically I can edit videos I can edit photos from this uh, SSD and it it feels about the same speed uh, internal SSD is very fast it is not the same I didn't compare it but uh, Subjectively, I do not see any problems to edit uh, a video or photo on external SSD. It works fine. For most of development cases, it will be not needed. For example, now I still have Xcode 10 and Xcode 11 installed and just deleted Xcode Beta from my Mac. Additionally, I have 15 GB used for Windows installation for someday maybe play some video games. Additionally, I have a virtual computer with Android simulator to test some apps and um, yeah, I still have plenty of space left. I think this, this uh, SSD will be enough for me for upcoming years and if not, I always have option to buy way cheaper <laughs> external SSDs than upgrade uh, SSD internally. Ok, let's talk about RAM. I decided to stick with 16GB uh, of uh, RAM. In my old 13-inch MacBook Pro I have 8GB of RAM and I saw that it is not enough. When I bought um, Mac Mini I was thinking that I will upgrade my RAM as soon as I will get it. I got 8GB uh, mm, of RAM model with i5 processor but I didn't do that. Because with very fast SSD it wasn't necessary, it was working just fine with 8 gigabytes. Of course I saw time to time that I, I low memory warnings. With 16 gigabytes RAM in my 16 inch MacBook Pro I do not see any problems with RAM. What I am using for work, I, I am using Slack open it usually. For discussions with remote team members I have web browser open it with multiple tags, tabs, maybe too much tabs open it. I have Xcode of course open it and of course I am using iOS simulators all the time and it works just fine. I do not uh, see need for 32 GB and price on RAM uh, upgrades uh, from Apple is very high, <laughs> way too high to upgrade uh, RAM just in case. Uh, if you are planning to use your machine for more than two years so maybe then then most likely it is reasonable to upgrade RAM but if you are planning to upgrade in a few years mm, I don't know why to do that okay but let's jump to some questions what is what are not answered yet um, one of the questions was about video editing how it feels and looks uh, to edit videos on this MacBook Pro and do I see our, any overheating problems? No, I do not see any overheating problems. I have external video card attached as well and I am using a 24 inch 4K screen uh, but uh, I, tried to, I tried to edit videos on MacBook without external video card as well and I didn't see any overheating problems. But I have to say that I am my use case for video editing is very light. Let's say I am 
do not uh, edit uh, 4K video. Uh, my videos usually are very short, just some Instagram stories, some TikTok videos and some YouTube videos. But uh, I, I'm really happy. I'm really happy how, the, how this base model works for my video editing needs. Uh, the same actually for photography. I'm using RAW photos, I'm editing in Lightroom and it works very fast. I really like how it works. I'm, I'm really happy with this upgrade. Some more questions about some more basic stuff. So ports. Uh, we have four USB-C ports here. I'm using uh, two of them. Usually I have uh, external video card which works like uh, USB-C hub as well and also this um, external video card is power source for my, for my MacBook Pro. Eventually I am planning to upgrade my monitor to be able to use USB-C monitor with power from this monitor. Currently yeah, I have this external video card in the middle which ironically is uh, less powerful or about the same like uh, internal video card in uh, MacBook Pro. And another one is uh, again USB-C dongle and this USB-C dongle is connected to the Ethernet cable and how USB 3 ports and also it is my SD card reader. Okay, one more question. Buy now or wait for upcoming updates? So you can wait for upcoming updates forever. There is always uh, next better, nicer, more powerful, cheaper uh, device around the corner. But if you need to upgrade, uh, this is very, very good machine and uh, it is just released. So far seems that no any significant problems with this machine and yeah, why not? If you need, if you need it, it is very good time to upgrade. So I have a question about the battery life. Um, battery life is quite good. I spent two days working from very interesting place. I was in tattoo salon and I got a tattoo on my hand. And uh, while tattoo artist was working on my tattoo, I was working on my development tasks. Uh, basically, I got uh, five hours of work, about five hours of work from my MacBook Pro and use case was uh, light web browsing, Xcode, uh, Slack and also I had one, one hour meeting on our Hangouts. Okay, that was about it. I did not compare it. MacBook Pro with Mac Mini in this video. It is already a little bit too long. <laughs> Hopefully it was interesting for you. Let me know if what you think about this video. Leave the comments, likes and subscribes are really appreciated. I, and yeah, see you on the next one. Bye.